I was sitting next to a girl and Mary was overthinking, so I got switched to an empty seat. This guy is on his way to the Philippines to meet his girlfriend for the first time and move there permanently. And on his first of three flights, he happened to be seated next to a woman, so his girlfriend thought he was cheating and broke up with him. Anytime that Brandon has to interact with any woman ever, it's basically the end of the world. I know I make a lot of hyperbolic statements, but I honestly think this is the most toxic relationship I've ever seen on the show. Because of the jealousy and insecurity issues between them, they have decided to be FaceTiming 24-7 no matter what. Bad. It smells bad. I haven't even pooped yet. Oh. She doesn't even trust him to go to the bathroom in his own house. She's worried that some woman's just gonna randomly spawn in when he goes in there to take a dump. Is that what she thinks is gonna happen? Like, I don't understand. What What is the scenario here? Does somebody climb through the window and start hitting on him when he's just sitting there? Hey, I couldn't help but notice that it only kinda smells in here. You wanna go out? I spend every single hour, every single minute, every single second on video call with Mary every single day. Since I've met Mary virtually, we started to be on the phone more and more and more until it just became a mutual agreement that we would just be on the phone 24 7. And this is no exaggeration. Brandon has admitted that he can't even hold a job because obviously no jobs are going to allow him to FaceTime all day. This also means that Brandon can no longer have any private conversations with friends or family since Mary will always be there, always listening. It's almost like the beginning of some sort of horror movie. I, I think there's an idea there. She also has eight tattoos total. Two or three of them have my name on it. So yeah, that's a big deal. When I get there, it's, I just hope that we won't be fighting like we do and everything is gonna be a lot better. So it becomes clear pretty quickly that Brandon is absolutely exhausted with this whole situation, which is understandable because it's exhausting just to watch. It sounds like most of the time they're just fighting and arguing, and obviously he's unable to go do anything on his own. So he's just stuck inside all day, taking craps and naps while she's watching him and arguing everywhere in between. Now the situation is definitely very sad because Brandon has a lot of childhood trauma. It sounds like his dad was just a terrible person and very abusive, and his mother struggled with addiction. He had to live on his own at age 15, but eventually his godparents found out and they took him in so he now lives in their camper outside of their house and then at some point he met Mary online and she globbed onto him and continued to make his life difficult we fight a lot because we're so far away oh okay yeah but we fight like almost every day you know that I can't just go out and talk to any girl working or receptionist or cash register without me and you fighting. Do you hear that? The poor guy can't even talk to a cash register without them fighting. You know what? In a weird way, I think their fighting may actually decrease, at least for a short period once he gets there, because then she can keep an eye on him 24-7. That's what I thought for about 30 seconds until I realized, wait a minute, she's already keeping an eye on him 24-7. What am I talking about? Don't make me feel bad right now because it's your fault. I'm You're not- too friendly to other girls. I understand you. Yeah, Brandon, you're being way too friendly. You can't be friendly to all these women out in the world. If you see a woman ever, you just gotta scream at him and tell him you have a girlfriend. If a woman ever says hello to you, you should just turn around and sprint in any direction as fast as possible, like Paul. So in this next part, Brandon goes to the dentist, and of course he has to bring Mary with him, so he asks his dentist if he can put the camera in the corner, and she's like, uh, okay, what for? And he's like, oh, my girlfriend who lives in the Philippines wants to watch so that she can have a mental breakdown when she finds out you're a woman. Is it okay if I put the phone up somewhere where my significant other can see me? Of course. Is it okay if I put my phone up in the corner where my significant other can scream at me? And what's her name? <laughs> Mary. Hey, Mary. Uh, hello. <laughs> Welcome. How long have you guys been dating? Um, we've been dating for over two years now. Is this your first love? Uh-oh. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Well, I'm just gonna go show Dr. Tammy your films. That was like perfect comedic timing. That could not have been any better. I love the way that the dentist just looks over at Mary and sees her crying and just completely ignores the whole thing. Well, that was pretty fucking weird. Anyway, I'm gonna go show the doctor your films. You lied to me. You said I'm your first love, but now you said I'm not. What she means by that is like first girlfriend. I have an ex too, but he's not my first love. Oh, when you put it like that, yes, you, of course, you are my first love. You just said no. 
Baby, I'm sorry. It's not what I meant. I don't know what I said. Just t can you tell me everything to say before I say it? It'll be a lot easier that way because I'm going to end up saying something you don't like. Seriously, this is only episode one. I'm already exhausted. The guy can't do anything on his own. He can't even go fishing. She thinks he's going to cheat when he's out fishing. Is there going to be cell service when we get to the river spot? Yeah, it might not be as good of fishing there, but we tried to pick somewhere uh, that had a little bit of service. Okay. Oh, great. Thank you. Mary just watched Lady in the Water last night, and she's worried that some woman's gonna come swimming up from the river and seduce me. I don't even think that's what that movie's about, so I don't know where she got that idea. But yeah, basically, fishing is a big no-no. A, a lot of things can happen while you're fishing. The last time I tried to go fishing, Mary thought that I was cheating on her with someone else. Now I've lost connection. Oh, no. You should get it back here in two seconds. I just got two bars back. So I have to be on the phone with Mary when I go or we have a really big fight. And guess what? Mary is not even awake right now. She is going to sleep through the whole thing. You may have noticed that Brandon's godparents are very supportive of his relationship, but the same cannot be said for his mother and his siblings. Baby, say hello. She looks happy. And you guessed it, Mary doesn't even like the idea of Brandon hanging out with his mother and his sister. I'm sorry I haven't been able to come over to your house. Because it's a house full of women and Mary's not okay with that. Right. Right. That's right. What does she want him to do? Does she want to put him in a box or put him in a jar all day? It sounds like even when he's in the Philippines, he's never going to be able to go anywhere by himself. And if he does, I bet he'll still have to FaceTime her. This means that he is never going to be able to work or make money for the rest of his life. It sucks that it spills over into the family dynamic. You can't come see me because I live in a house with females. You can't spend time with your siblings because she's a female and she has friends possibly that might come over. Now this is very bizarre because she insists on always FaceTiming him. She's going to hear very private conversations about her because, you know, they're going to have to talk about it. So before they've even met, she already doesn't like his family and his family already doesn't like her. So yeah, a few more weeks go by and Brandon leaves for the Philippines. And it's actually pretty sad because his mother acknowledges that because of her own issues, she couldn't be there for him properly as a mother. And now that she's clean and trying to mend things, Mary has come along and driven a wedge between him and his whole family. Oh yeah, there's one more thing I forgot to mention. I was going to show this part but I don't actually have the clip. So early on Mary admits that sometimes when Brandon is sleeping she pretends that there's a power outage and her phone died so that she can go out and hang out with her friends. Of course her friends are three guys and she says that she doesn't tell Brandon because he gets insecure. She also claims that Brandon made her drop out of her education because of jealousy issues but that's just entirely what she claimed and we didn't see him have any opinion on that at all. So yeah I definitely think that part of her insecurity has to do with the fact that she's lying to him so she's worried that he could do the same to her. And this is the problem with constant communication communication. Everybody needs time to themselves, time with their family, time with their friends, away from their partner. Anyway, let's get back to this plane ride and see what happens. On the flight from Eugene to Los Angeles now, flight one of three. I'm feeling very nervous and excited. Oh no, this is never a good sign. If you see 20 minutes later, you know, it could only be something bad. Uh oh. Oh no! So already, Mary is on edge because there was like a 20 minute window from when Brandon was sitting on the runway to when he was up in the air and could use the Wi-Fi. So think about it, in that 20 minutes when the plane was taking off, he easily could have cheated, you know? Even though he's flying across the world to live permanently with his girlfriend, he easily could have cheated on the first plane in the first 20 minutes. So once she finds out that he's seated next to a woman, oh my god, what a betrayal. It's over. As I'm finally in the air, there's a girl next to me, and I'm showing Mary, and she's getting those insecurities and... So he is literally going to message her the entire flight, which means that he will have no time to cheat. It's going to be impossible to cheat if you're typing back and forth with somebody the entire time. And yet she just keeps accusing him of cheating over and over again, and he's like, how? How would I even do that? Explain how that's even possible if I'm talking to you. Even if I wanted to hit on this person, you just made me take a picture of her and record her. Now she's terrified. When you buy plane tickets and you're picking your seat, it's not like you can see what gender a person is sitting next to you. Like, I can't control that. 
Yeah, okay, Brandon. I bet you hacked into the database and found out who was sitting in every single seat and got every single girl's number. And I bet that after that, you got every person's number that you ever saw for the rest of your life, you liar. It's funny that she says he always wants to be with girls because in the very first episode, he says that he's now on edge if he's ever around women. It's literally the opposite. She's given him a fear of women. All he sees now every time is just a giant fight waiting to happen. You know, in the beginning, I was exaggerating when I said that he should just run away like Paul. But at this point, I think that might be his best option. And I know that no one can seduce me and make me change my mind about Mary. I've been wanting to go to the Philippines for over two years now. I'm finally on my way. There's nothing that's going to change that. Have you started to feel exhausted by all of this yet? Can you imagine being this guy? You know, I swear he's gonna go bald in like three years. You know that comparison of Obama when he first got elected to when he left office because of the stress of the job, you know? Well, I think this is even more stressful. This guy's gonna look like Bilbo Baggins in three years. She's upset, but no one's sitting next to me, so. We're just so used to overthinking and fighting over the phone that it's just become normal all right i can't take it anymore i can't do it Ugh, god we do have to watch them meet though you know i can't skip over that part there's more no what oh no oh how how does he do this Imagine how stressful that would be. You're flying over there to live there and she's breaking up with you on the plane ride. But also they probably break up with each other like every day. So I guess this isn't any different. Did I mention this guy gave her like all the money he had, which wasn't much to help build her house? Oh my God. Should we end the call? Because we're still on the phone. <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah, we should. Imagine if she looked at her phone and she's like, um, Brandon, who is this girl that you're hugging and kissing right now? Who, what are you, are you kidding me? It takes a lot of weight off my shoulders to finally put the phone away and just be there in the moment. This anxiety that I was having with our fights just finally gone. I'm hoping that all the negativity and bull just be behind us. Imagine if they didn't end the call and they just decided to stay on FaceTime forever, you know? So anyway, that's it for today's video. Let's hope maybe things go better now that he's there somehow, magically, I don't know. I think for a long time, these two will have a pretty unhealthy, obsessive relationship, but maybe they'll chill out a little bit as they get older, or maybe not. We will see as the season progresses. Anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you next time.